But if you are interested in buying, you might be saying to yourself, well, it seems like we're at a high, so we're gonna see a collapse, or we might see a correction in the real estate market. Hey, what's going on guys? Jeff Koga here and in this episode of uh, Jeff Koga Live, I want to talk about uh, some article that uh, was popped up by uh, one of my favorite blogs that I've been following since 2008 and I'm actually a frequent commentator in that blog and that blog is called Dr. Housing Bubble. And so for anyone that's actually in Southern California or even in the California real estate market, I highly recommend individuals to go check out the blog Dr. Housing Bubble, especially in the sense that he is very, very bearish on the housing market in Southern California and uh, a lot of his post it deals with talking about just the outrageous prices of uh, homes in Los Angeles County as well as Orange County and he goes into really detail in prices okay meaning that he'll actually pull up uh, current listings and MLS's and says hey look at this uh, crap shack that you can buy for X amount of dollars and the way he writes is pretty entertaining to me so if you're interested in that kind of uh, reading the counter perspective other than hey you know what the real estate market is doing great and the real estate market is explosive and it's taken off then definitely go check out uh, dr. housing bubble and uh, just uh, what four days ago or so um, dr. housing bubble came out with an article that talked about Orange County housing um, and how condos have hit an all-time high in terms of like purchases of condos has hit an all-time high in uh, Orange County. So he has an actual chart in there that says uh, condos that has hit, what, $475,000 for median condos in uh, Orange County. And the last time that it went over $470,000 was 2006. So if you know anything about history, just knowing those facts, right, you're kind of like, oh my gosh. We're, you know they're selling condos at 2006 prices and uh, that should do one or two things for you guys right depending on where you're at but if you are interested in buying you might be saying to yourself well it seems like we're at a high so we're gonna see a collapse or we might see a correction in the real estate market so maybe I'll wait okay that's one side of the camp the other side of the camp uh, might look at this and be like "Ooh, you know what we did hit, hit all-time highs but hey you know what we still got ways to go up, so let me get in the market now. All right, now, regardless of which side of the camp that you're in, I wanna talk about more of the kind of the market condition. Why is because I've been actively going on social media, especially YouTube, and searching a lot of people that are making kind of prediction about the local real estate market. But I decided to go on to see, hey, what are some uh, real estate professionals talking about? And uh, the craziest part was there's one gentleman, I think he's getting into like video marketing, talking about real estate markets and uh, talked about the 2017 housing prediction. And I watched it and I was like, wow, you know, if I didn't know the things that I know, right, I would listen to this guy. Why is because one, he's a real estate agent, right, a licensed individual. So he's talking about the supply and demand factor. And, and I'm listening to this, I'm just like, is this what the the real estate professions have got into and uh, I left a comment and then suddenly a um, bunch of people started leaving comments and one guy started hosing the guy basically saying oh you don't know what you're talking about you know we're gonna see a collapse in the real estate market especially starting off in the tech bubble and then from the tech bubble the real estate market is next and uh, you don't know anything and then the guy comes back and then the guy on YouTube and I felt bad for this guy and he goes back and says well we didn't see that much of a change in prices when the last dot-com bubble changed and then the other guy comes back and he's like well you don't know what you're talking about I'm an MBA graduate from UCLA Anderson School of Business or something like that and and then he says he says you don't have any right whatsoever to be talking about this and peddling this information now I'm kind of paraphrasing his comment because I'm not reading it as I'm driving but that was kind of the message it was a pretty harsh comment okay so I, I I got 
involved in the comment section, right? Because why is like I like to engage with people, not to like start a debate. Um, like like debates are good as long as you're not like name calling. So I went in there and I said, and I kind of gave him my points, right? Because one, he's using very powerful language like collapse, right? Like what's the definition of a collapse? What like it stops working completely? Okay. Do you consider the last time we had it? prices decline in the real estate market as a collapse? Well, I guess you could. You know, the whole financial system on the was on the brinks of collapse. Um, I'll say that, and it was really scary time, all right? And I continuously go back and tell people all the time is this, is that gotta be really, really careful on, especially if you're in a position of influence, right? Is to be careful on the choices of words that you use because you can spook people all the time, right? Like, I try not to talk about like collapses or even booms and stuff like that you know there are some things that I'm biased towards which is yeah I wish that there's going to be a collapse okay I honestly do I'll say that right and the reason being is because I'm positioned now versus uh, 2008 2009 I'm positioned now with enough experience enough investors to back it where I can truly capitalize on it right but do I honestly think like that's gonna happen um, I don't think it will and here's the reason why okay and this is some of the stuff that people don't really talk about which is start paying attention to how the global economy ties into the United States currency right and uh, there's something called the petrodollar okay where the United States dollar is a world reserve currency and because it's a world reserve currency meaning that you know it, it's traded for oil that's how it kind of started with like the OPEC nation all right and the Middle East now within that there's five kind of currencies okay in the world that's being traded United States dollar being one of them another one one is being what the franc okay another one is a Canadian dollar another one is the Japanese yen and there's another one the New Zealand dollar and kind of like the Australian dollar sometimes in the mix too which is like kind of the five or six uh, currencies that are out there that kind of like the rest of the world recognizes as a, a strong currency right so now just recently last year um, that International Monetary Fund which is the simplest way I can explain this if you have never heard of it before is Federal Reserve Reserve of the world okay and they actually look after all the banks and they have certain meetings with all the head banks and they talk about how currency should flow from different countries now last year something remarkable happened where the IMF recognizes uh, uh, for the first time ever the Chinese currency as being part of the world currency okay the yuan which is interesting because that has never happened before in history all right and uh, so because of that some of the people that are betting against this country are basically saying oh yeah you know what the Roman Empire is gonna fall which is referencing the United States states as being the Roman Empire and we're going to fall and the truth is this is one I don't know okay I'm not I'm not that smart all right to know if it is going to collapse or not honestly I don't know I know enough to be dangerous and have a conversation with people that are a lot smarter that I can actually ask intelligent questions when like investors and other people in the finance industry I can ask you know intelligent questions uh, based on it because I know enough but what I try to lean towards and what I suggest everyone else to do, okay, versus like the guy on YouTube that was just a claim that he's an MBA graduate from UCLA Anderson School of Business, okay? And he was just literally like ripping the shreds out of this poor real estate agent that's trying to make a buck, right? Like now I get it, he's trying to hustle, right? So he has a professional bias, so he can't talk about the sky is falling, right? So I get it, right? But pay attention to the people that are a lot smarter. For example, like today, right? I sat in the office and I watched Berkshire Hathaway's uh, annual meeting that they just had okay so if you don't know who they are um, it's Warren Buffett one of the what I think number three on the Forbes list in terms of the richest man in the world and um, it was basically a Q&A session with Warren Buffett and his business partner Charlie Munger on there answering questions from uh, shareholders of Berkshire Hathaway and uh, people that just want to ask him questions okay about what his take on the economy is what his take on certain industry and the actual whole meeting is about seven hours long and there's some really really interesting thing that you can take take away from this now before I tell you certain points of that meeting I want you to consider this all right if you don't understand any of this market cycle stuff but you're very remotely you know interested on what the real estate market is going to do right try to listen to the people who called the last crash okay and I'm talking about called the last crash 
all right? I'm not talking about people that's been calling about like, hey, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, and they say for so long that, hey, when it does happen, they're just like, oh, look at me, I got it right. Okay, there are certain individuals. Okay, I'll say one individual is like a gentleman named Peter Schiff, right? A very conservative guy, and he runs a brokerage called Pacific uh, Union Capital, I believe, and he's a big uh, gold bull for the Chinese stock market. Okay, now he's been talking about this big collapse that's going to happen, and then now since it started recovering, he's been calling for another ginormous crash that's going to happen. And it's really interesting because when you start looking at, you know, the history of when people call crashes, okay, use the Google advanced search query, right? So meaning like put in the person's name and put, you know, hey, real estate prediction and then change the date of the articles from things that actually got indexed from like January 2004 to January 2006. If you use that strategy, you can find a lot of articles from like CNN, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, LA Times of certain individuals who have called uh, the next coming collapse. Now, during that time, right, from like 2003 to about 2005, you wouldn't find anything of Warren Buffett talking about a collapse in the real estate market. You just couldn't. He was still very uh, bullish on it. And he said, yeah, real estate is fine. It seems like it's a little overpriced, but I don't think that it's going to collapse. Then in mid 2005, he changed the tune. And it says, no, it's overpriced. You need to be careful. All right. And uh, we all know what happened about you know a year and a half later, 18 months to 24 months later, right? All the the you know sky started falling and it collapsed, right? So even though in the 2017 Berkshire Hathaway meeting, right, that he just had, some of the questions were real estate, right? And he was very bullish on it. And for me, it's really, really interesting because keep in mind, the position that he's in is that if he says something that's really, really bearish, right, the market will actually turn. And uh, another podcast episode a couple of uh, months ago, I talked about when Warren Buffett actually put his house up for sale. I mean, he has it up for sale for $14 million. And a lot of the talks in my space of investor land is basically saying, hey, does he know something that uh, we don't know, right? Is he doing something and trying to cash out now to sell his principal residence um, so he can uh, you know, liquidate his assets without actually spooking the market, right? And that was kind of the, the, the podcast episode where I talked about that and I said that. And uh, as I'm looking forward now, really, no one knows, ladies and gentlemen, honestly. No one really knows. One thing is for certain is certain areas that are 2000, over 2006 prices. Just like I said, go to Dr. Housing Bubble or you just heard me talk about it is that, hey, condos in Orange County has surpassed uh, 2006 level at $475,000. has surpassed it. But if we talk about just understanding market cycle right we don't really say that there's a boom in the market unless you go over maybe about 20 percent to 30 percent of the previous highs okay until you legitimately go over it they don't really say that it we entered into another you know super bull market right so it's really interesting because the lines are being drawn in the sand currently right now in the marketplace and i'm a firm believer that we're going to see a lot more talk about this in cnn because of where we're at so if you are in the real estate business and if you are an investor, if you are a real estate agent, you're a mortgage broker, or maybe you're looking to buy your first house, or maybe you're looking to sell, regardless of where you're at, okay, no one truly knows. It's only a hunch. And what I tell individuals is this, is tread lightly because something will happen. We just don't know what it will, what will happen. Bye.